It's Wednesday again, and I've taken a little break from these videos since January 1st, but we're going to get ready to get back on target. Um, I succeeded, if you watch us on Instagram, you will have seen that I succeeded in getting through the end or the third repeat of table of chart one. And now we're ready for the border chart. I've played around a little bit because, you know, the end is near and I got excited. But I'm glad I did because there was a couple, of, I've ripped out a couple of times just trying to figure out the best cast on. And um, there's a double yarn over, and but then on the way back you have to pick up two stitches. That's a little tricky. Um, and then the slip, when you turn, you have you knit two together and then when you turn around there's a put your yarn in back slip stitch for that first stitch to make a nice border along your shawl between the border of the border and the shawl itself. So um, I'm going to show you those three stitches today so that you can get started on your border. And uh, we're going to get going on this. This should be done by the end of this week. Next week we'll be blocking and we will be finished with the Rosita shawl for this year. And now I'm kind of excited. What am I going to do next? Um, I'm going to show you the shawl and what I've done so far. And then I've got just a really uncomfortable to knit, super bulky yarn so that I can show you the techniques and make it easier for you. All right, I'm leaning down to show you this. Here is the shawl. It's so big now with our three repeats. Um, I put in the uh, lifeline that you saw. I ripped back to it once. Yeah, I ripped back to it once. Um, and then I got nervous, so I put in a second lifeline and pulled out. Well, I replaced one and put it into a new spot. And then I got then I got brave, and I didn't replace that lifeline again. I also didn't have to go back down to it, so that made me really brave. But what happens next? After you finish the third repeat of chart one, you then purl back, and you get ready to change direction of your work. So what we're going to do is cast on some stitches off the end and you are going to start working up and down along the long side of your shawl. And I'll show the finished product for you so you can see that. Here is the main body of the shawl that we just did. And what we're moving on to now is this border along the bottom here, right here. This is what we're making now. And the way that begins is we have to cast on stitches right along this edge. I'm trying to find this for you. Right along this edge. And we're going to be working back and forth and back and forth, catching just one stitch here, back and forth all the way down, catching just one stitch with a knit two together along here, and then a slip with yarn in back to get this little ridge along the top here. All right, I'm going to show you on our sample how this works so that you can get some ideas. All right, so the first thing you need to um, be make sure is that you're on the side of your garment that you want to actually work at right angles to. Um, this is the, the side that I knit across to. And then I just did a row of purl back. So if I knit across and then decide that I want my border to be on this side of my work, then I'd stop at the knit side. If I want my border to be at the bottom of the side of my work, then I will purl back and stop at this side. Um, this is a rectangle, so it's probably not going to matter too much. But your shawl is not a rectangle. There is definitely a top and a bottom, and we want our border to go through go on at the bottom. All right, now important task number two is that I need to perform a knitted on cast on. Now there's m several ways you can do this um, or add stitches in a, in a project. You can do the over the thumb technique and put it on. That won't work in this situation because that double yarn over is gonna undo that over the thumb. It just will not work nicely. So knit it on, cast on. You either can just perform a knit stitch, but instead of pulling this stitch off, you position the new stitch on the end of your needle. So that would be the first stitch. 
and then the instructions that say to add a stitch marker I'm gonna add my big guy because these are bigger needles and then carry on doing a knitted on stitch so here and we need one stitch and then as according to the pattern we need 17 additional knitted on cast on stitches so that's two three One trick to making this knitted on cast on stitch easier is to not tighten up this stitch too much until you get the next one on. So four, I'm trying not to move out of screen for you, but hopefully I'm not. Now tighten this up and put the next one on. Only tighten it part way and the next one. Okay, I'm not gonna put all of these on I'm just going to do a few so that I can show you the stitches you need. All right, the next important thing that you need to know so that you're ready for the border, and if you can see what's happening here, this is working at, this is now at right angles, or we've added on to here, but when we start working, we're going to fold it around. Um, so watch that. Um, the other thing you need to know about are the, there, there is the double yarn over and then the knit one purl one on the way back. So I wanna make sure that you've got that down. And you're gonna to have to refer to the chart for the uh, specific stitches, cause I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put those in, but I'm not gonna put them in in the right order. I'm gonna knit one, do a yarn over, knit two, actually knit one, knit two, it doesn't matter. All right, and then we're gonna do our double yarn over. So it is around and around. And on the chart, it's just two spaces with two circles right next to each other. And that means double yarn over. I'm gonna do that again. So it's around and around again. So you're putting two loops on your needle. In British terms, that would be yarn in front. Yarn in front is the terminology they use. All right, now I'm gonna to knit two together and Again, I'm not doing the proper stitches here. I'm just giving you an idea of how this works. It's really hard to knit this bulky stuff. Knit two together. I'm gonna get to the end. Slip stitch, um, I'm gonna slip my marker. And this is the pattern's instructions. And then knit two together. And this is where we now turn our work and join to the body of the shawl. Knit two together. And that's it for this little border edge. Now I flip over, trying to make sure you're in this. Flip over, put my yarn in back, yarn in back, slip my stitch, slip my stitch, slip my marker, and then I'm gonna purl to that double yarn over. So these are regular stitches. Now I'm at, am I at my double yarn over? Yes, I am, I'm at my double yarn over. So I purl one, but very carefully without getting this stitch off, I'm gonna knit one as well. So what I've done is made a big hole that is formed with two stitches on top of it. Okay, and then I'm gonna purl to the end of the row. Pearl to the end of the row. It's very awkward with my long double points and trying to aim you into the picture. There, there. So there's the hole where my double yarn over was, or no, that's my join hole. Here is my double yarn over hole right here. All right, I'm gonna knit the next row just so that you can get a look at what this, what this looks like. And I'm gonna repeat this as well. All right, so I'm just gonna follow the process that I did before. Knit one, yarn over, knit, knit. I'm gonna put in another double yarn over. Goes there. All right. Um, did 
there's my double yarn over. So I'm gonna do another double yarn over. This is not how the instructions work. The instructions work, you do it every fourth row. But I wanna make sure you understand the double yarn over. And then um, knit two together. If I can. Very bulky yarn. Double yarn over. Knit to the end. Slip my marker. And again, an important aspect of this project, knit two, once I slip that marker, I always knit two together. Knit two together. I think a worsted weight would have been a better choice for this demo. I had this sitting next to my chair. Knit two together and then turn my work. Turn my work, yarn in back, slip this first stitch, slip my marker, and then go back to purling until I get to that double yarn over. Purl, purl, purl. I'm approaching the double yarn over, it's right here. I purl one, and then I knit one in that same sequence. And then I purl to the end of the row. Purl, 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 purl. All right, so we now have, if you see this right here, we're now linking this piece to this piece. And the further we go, the more this is gonna fold around and become the border to this piece. The other thing that we have happening is, and I'm gonna stretch this out, I have a yarn over here that's really big. I have two of them. You see that? These are very large yarn overs with twists there. Those are the double yarn over stitch as compared to a single yarn over stitch, which is right here. And then I think I should have a second one. So, oh, and there's the first one. So we have two single yarn over stitches. We have two very large yarn over stitches that are the result of um, the double yarn over and the two stitches into it from the back. And then the join. All right, I hope that that helps you get ready for this border. Those are the two places that gave me a little bit of grief. Okay, I hope that those three issues, the knitted on cast on, which happens along here, the um, double yarn over, which forms these large holes, and the knit two together to join the border to the main body of the shawl. In addition to that, the slip, the slip with yarn in back to give you a nice edge helps you be successful for this border. I'm gonna show you again the finished product Thank goodness I have this, right? Because I've used it a few times to help me understand what's going on anyway. All right, so here's my border along the edge here. So if you see, um, yeah, this is the knitted on cast on side. Here is the knitted on cast on side, right along here. Um, here are our double yarn overs, these larger holes. These are just single yarn overs. And if you look at the spacing on these, these happen every fourth row, whereas these single ones happen every row, both there and along the edge of the sawtooth pattern. Okay? And then up here, right in here, this is where the knit two together, and then on the back, when you return back on your purl rows, the slip one with yarn in back creates this little border or this little edge on that border. Okay? And again, as you work, it's going to show up attached to the bottom side of your shawl, except for your shawl, you were working this way, and now you're going to be working this way at right angles. Okay, that's it for today. I hope that you have, are having a good time with this lace knit along. I've yet to see anybody post any progress pictures, so I know there are several of you who at least bought the kit. So I hope that to see you um, posting pictures soon. Remember, we have an Instagram channel. We have an Instagram channel at atwistedpico.com. You can um, just tag us with 
hashtag a twisted pico or you can um, tag Rosita Shawl. You can also tag um, Kelly Slack Designs. It should show up in there. Or um, Rosita Shawl Lace Knit Along. Either one of those will get, get you to something we can see. And I would love to see how you're doing. Um, I'm looking forward. I'm almost at the end. I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure this is going to happen, that I'm going to zip along on this because I am really ready for this shawl to be done. And, you know, the end is near. When the end is near, I really get going. It's somewhere in the middle when I have problems that I start, like, threatening to throw things into naughty chairs and such. I passed the hump. This is a lesson. Don't throw things into the naughty chair. Work through your angst and get to the finish line. Um... And maybe for a new year, for my new year, I'm going to have a finished shawl. We've got two more weeks left on this, this, this episode. And then next week I will block this. This is going to get a full wet block because I am a full wet block kind of gal and lace deserves a good wet block. So we'll do a full wet block on this and I'll pin it out even in the dips of winter. And, um, we should be ready to go in two weeks with a finished shawl. We'll have a show and tell, um, yeah, please, please, please send photos if you've started this project. Uh, but remember, even if you haven't started it, these videos will be up so you can work your way through the series at any time. And you can also buy your kit at any time as long as the yarn holds out. Remember, this is limited edition yarn. So um, we have only so much left. So you might want to get it soon if you want it. I did put up a few colors. And if you really like colored um, yarns, you don't like white or beige, you can go in and get those limited editions. But those are even more limited because I dyed them myself. All right, that's it for me today. Uh, remember, if you like this channel, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you next Wednesday for more Rosita Lace Knit Along. I'll also see you somewhere in between to update you on other shenanigans happening at a Twisted Pico. All right, bye.